There are long conversations with valid points on both sides about in-combat healing versus out-of-combat healing. And to both sides, I say, we wouldn't need to do as much healing if all the enemies died faster. So get ready, all you stabby rogues, you burly fighters, you mad lad barbarians. Because I have some primo combat enhancements, courtesy of three classes that excel at helping you take your killing game to the next level. But before we get into the blood and guts of how to cover the floor with blood and guts faster than ever before, if you'd like to take your game further, join the D6 Damage Discord. We have fantastic discussions about all aspects of the game character builds, strategy guides, and much, much more. You'll find a link to our Discord in the description of this video. Now then, without further ado, the three classes that can boost party damage output. First up, the Cleric. A Cleric can boost the party's damage output in several ways. They have access to spells and domains that grant great offensive abilities, and even channel energy can boost damage output. Let's start by talking about your domain options. First up, the good old Destruction Domain. At first level, a Destruction Cleric gets the Destructive Smite Power, which allows you to add half your Cleric level to a single damage roll as a swift action. Then at 8th level, you get Destructive Aura. This grants nearby allies a bonus on damage rolls. Another great option is the War Domain. At first level, War Domain clerics get the Battle Rage ability. This allows you to grant a morale bonus on attack and damage rolls either to yourself or an ally as a swift action. Then at 8th level, you get Weapon Master. This lets you grant a weapon a special ability, such as Keen or Flaming. Finally, there's the Heroism subdomain. At first level, a cleric with this subdomain gets Touch of Glory. This allows you to give a creature a nice bonus to Charisma-based skill checks. But what you really want is that sweet 8th level ability. You can emit a 30-foot Aura of Heroism for a number of rounds per day equal to your cleric level. You can do this as a swift action. Allies in this aura are treated as if they were under the effects of heroism. This gives your friends a plus two morale bonus on attacks, saves, and skill checks. Now let's talk about variant channeling. Instead of standard healing or harming undead, variant channeling adds additional effects tied to your cleric domains. For example, a cleric with fire domain can deal extra fire damage, or provide fire resistance when channeling energy. These effects come with a trade-off. When you create a cleric, you decide whether you have the standard form of channel energy or the variant. Once this choice is made, it can't be altered. When you use your channel energy to heal, affected creatures only gain half the normal amount of healing, but they also receive a special beneficial effect. For example, a 7th level cleric normally heals 4d6 points of damage with channel positive energy. Now, if you have variant channeling, you would only heal 2d6. With that in mind, if your goal is to enhance party damage, I would recommend the battle variant channeling ability. When it's heal aspected, creatures gain a channeling bonus on weapon damage and rolls to confirm critical hits until your next turn. Now then, let's talk about some of the awesome spells that clerics have access to to enhance party damage. Starting with Bless. Each ally gets a plus one morale bonus on attack rolls and saving throws against fear effects. This has a range of 50 feet and is a first level cleric spell. Aid. This spell provides a plus one morale bonus on attack rolls and saves against fear as well as temporary hit points equal to 1d8 plus caster level, to a maximum of 1d8 plus 10. This spell targets a single creature and has a range of touch. It is a second level cleric spell. You also have the old standby, Bull's Strength, for a plus four enhancement bonus to strength. 
that adds up to a plus two to damage with a melee weapon. Bull's strength has a range of touch, and it is a level two cleric spell. There's also heroism. A single creature gets a plus two morale bonus on attack rolls, saves, and skill checks. This is a range of touch. And it is a level three cleric spell for the heroism subdomain. Next, prayer. Allies get a plus one luck bonus. On attack rolls, weapon damage rolls, saves, and skill checks. Well, every one of your foes takes a minus one penalty on such rolls. This has a range of 40 feet and is a level three spell for clerics. Finally, there's Blessing of Favor. Each round for the duration, allies can choose one of the following. Increase their speed by 30 feet. Stand up as a swift action that does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Make one extra attack as part of a full attack action using their highest BAB, or get a plus two bonus on attack rolls and a plus two on dodge rolls versus AC, as well as reflex saves. Or finally, cast a single spell of second level or lower as if it were enlarged, extended, silent, or still. Blessing of Favor has a range of 25 feet plus five feet Per two cleric levels. It is a level four spell for clerics. Moving on from cleric to shaman. The shaman class can boost the party's damage output with spells, hexes, spirit powers, and a little help from your spirit animal. This one is more geared toward increasing the party's odds of hitting, so it's great for dealing with high AC enemies and bosses. First, let's talk about your hexes. One of your most important is going to be Fortune. This gives one target creature within 30 feet the ability to re-roll ability checks, attack rolls, saving throws, or skill checks. This works just like Advantage in 5th edition, roll 2d20s, take the higher result. At 8th level and 16th level, the duration of Fortune lasts for an additional round. Once a creature has benefited from fortune, it can't benefit again for 24 hours. Another good option is Fury. Target creature within 30 feet receives a plus two morale bonus on attack rolls and a plus two resistance bonus on saving throws against fear for a number of rounds equal to your wisdom modifier. At 8th and 16th levels, these bonuses increase by one. Once a creature has benefited from Fury, it cannot benefit again for another 24 hours. Finally, a very important hex for you is going to be Chant. Any creature that is within 30 feet that's affected by Fortune or Fury can have this effect extended by a duration of one round. Maintaining your Chant is a move action, so you're going to be stuck in position. Extending the effect of whatever hex you're using round after round until the battle's over. This can be really good if you've got a powerful fighter with a big weapon taking chunks out of an enemy boss. Now let's talk about your spirit. The one you should definitely go with is the battle spirit. This gives you a great spirit ability. Allies within 30 feet, including you, receive a plus one morale bonus on attack rolls and weapon damage rolls. At 8th level and 16th level, this bonus increases by plus 1. You can use this ability for a number of rounds per day equal to 3 plus your Charisma modifier. Another valuable tool in your kit for enhancing party damage is your Spirit Animal. This ability uses the same rules as a Wizard's Arcane Bond class feature and is treated as a familiar. Now, because this animal is connected to your Battle Spirit, it gets a plus two bonus to its natural armor. One of the best ways to use your familiar in combat is the aid another action. In melee combat, when your familiar is positioned to make a melee attack against the same target as one of your friends, what you do is you make an attack roll against an AC of 10. If you succeed, your friend gets a plus two bonus on their next attack roll against that opponent or a plus two AC bonus against that opponent's attack. The player you're helping will make that choice. 
If you're planning on going this direction, I would recommend looking into the Mauler familiar archetype. Unlike typical familiars, a Mauler gets enhanced strength and increased combat prowess. You do sacrifice some of the familiar's skill bonuses and abilities in exchange for becoming a more powerful and aggressive combatant. If you'd like more details on familiar archetypes, I put out a video covering that subject. It's a great way to enhance any character with a familiar. Now, let's talk about your shaman spells. As a shaman, you get access to a lot of the good stuff that the clerics get, such as Bless, that's a level 1 shaman spell. Aid, that's a level 2 shaman spell. Bull Strength is also a level 2 shaman spell. The final class that can really help a party up their game in the damage department is, of course, the Bard. A bard boosts the party's damage output primarily through the Inspire Courage performance, but bards also have some useful spells to bolster the party. Like I said, bardic performance is your most important tool for increasing the party's damage output. You're going to be using your Inspire Courage performance a lot. This effect gives all allies in range a plus one morale bonus, on saving throws against fear, and a plus one competency bonus on attack and weapon damage rolls. At fifth level and every six levels thereafter, this bonus increases by plus one, reaching a maximum of plus four at 17th level. Now, if your DM is willing, there are some feats that can make that number even better, such as Master Performer. When any of your bardic performance abilities grant your allies a bonus, increase that bonus by plus one. The prerequisites for this feat are obviously the bardic performance class feature. You'll also need the extra performance feat. And one other thing. This is a faction feat associated with the Kithrodian Academy. They're the Pathfinder equivalent to the Harpers in the Forgotten Realms. Now, if your DM allows you access to this powerful feat, you might also get Grand Master Performer. When any of your bardic performances grant your allies a bonus, increase that bonus by plus one. This stacks with the bonus from Master Performer. The prerequisites are the bardic performance class feature, extra performance, the Master Performer feat, and you must be a bard of 8th level. Another really good feat is Dissident Voice. As part of your bardic performance, allies within 30 feet of you can deal an extra 1d6 of sonic damage with successful weapon attacks. This does cover ranged projectile weapons as well, but the projectile has to damage a target within 30 feet of you. Another fun thing you can do with Inspire Courage and the Bard is done with your race. If you go with the ASMR, you can choose one Bardic Performance and treat the bonus from that Bardic Performance as plus one-sixth levels higher for determining its effects. So that means for every six levels, an additional plus one to your Inspire Courage. I'd recommend going with the Azada Blooded ASMR sub-variety. This gives you some great ability score modifiers, plus two to dexterity and plus two to charisma, exactly what you need for a bard. Finally, let's talk about some great bard spells. Bards get access to heroism. This is a second level bard spell. Now, one of the best is haste. When making a full attack action, a creature affected by haste can make one extra attack at its full base attack bonus. The lucky recipient also gets a plus one bonus on attack rolls and a plus one dodge bonus to AC and reflex saves. Finally, a hasted creature has its movement speed increased by 30 feet. Haste is a close range spell, 25 feet plus 5 feet for every two bard levels. Haste is a third level spell for the bard. Finally, let's end with Heroic Finale. This spell will immediately end your bardic performance, and one creature within range can make a move action or a standard action their choice. Making the standard action is really good because it allows for more attacking and more damage. Heroic Finale has a range of 25 feet, 
plus five feet for every two bard levels. It is a fourth level spell for the bard. I hope you've enjoyed finding out about three classes that can greatly increase the damage output of any party. Now, if you're in need of gaming paraphernalia, such as books, dice, miniatures, and much, much more, check out Noble Knight Games. You'll find an affiliate link in the description of this video. And if you're interested in a good old-fashioned haunted house adventure, check out Sorceress the Dietrich House, available right now on DriveThruRPG. Oh.